push. Good morning. Uh, this lovely lady, her name is Kush, presently. Uh, she's been through our facility twice in the past year. She was previously named Muriel. I think she looks more <laughs> like a Susie, though. Uh, you can name her what you want. She's available for adoption, though. She's ready to go today. She's already been spayed and microchipped and is ready to go out the door. According to the last person she lived with, though, she's a little bit food dominant. Food so dominant? If, if you've got other dogs, if you've got other dogs. That's a, that's a new syndrome. <laughs> Um, and she has put on a few pounds in the past year. Her photo from June, when she was in our facility last June, she's a little bit more slender. Um, she weighed in at 118, just a hair over 118 this morning. So she is a big girl. Um, she's an American Bulldog, approximately three years old. Sweet as pie, though. Um, she's a sweet, sweet dog. But we do recommend that if you've got a dog already, that we do an introduction down in our facility with your existing dog before you introduce this dog into your home because she is she is a little bit food dominant and you don't want any problems with a girl this big around. Um, I would like to give a special thanks to Supervisor Carroll who was down in our facility again this weekend helping somebody else adopt another dog. So I think that's four, maybe five dogs you've gotten out of our facility. Thank you. Here's a cookie for mentioning that. <laughs> it goes to the dog. Thank you. <laughs> She was, she was a lovely uh, f friend, and you know, as I have mentioned before, when you bring home a dog and it turns into a real diamond in the rough, people around you notice, and, and the Animal Care Center has <coughs> pens full of diamonds in the rough. She brought home a dog and gave it three baths, and he went from, you saw him gray to a powder white. He's a Bichon underneath all that no soot. Kidding. He's a great dog. They named him Marley, and uh, we're real grateful for the help that we got there this weekend on a Sunday. Very busy this Sunday, so yeah. congratulations. We're grateful that you're able to help people find dogs in our facility because it, it is a great resource for a, a companion animal. We have plenty, plenty of cats, plenty of dogs, and uh, including this lovely lady. And she's available, like I said, today. She's ready to go. She has been with us for a couple weeks, so there is no adoption fee on her, just the $15 licensing fee. And she's out the door. All other dogs are $30 right now, plus the $15 licensing fee. Um, I would side note, though, that uh, there's a possibility she might snore. So <laughs> if you're a light sleeper, <laughs> this may not be the dog for you. But if, if you can sleep through anything, then you probably manage to uh, coexist with this sweetheart. But uh, she's, she's a great dog. And we, we hope that this time when we adopt her out, that, that that's forever, that she will be permanently placed and that she will find happy every, happily ever after with wh whoever she goes with. So thank you all for helping out with these dogs. Last week's dog is still waiting. Brownie is still waiting. So uh, if you're interested in that dog still, she, he's still available along with this one. We're open from noon until 7 on weekdays, 10 to 5 on weekends. Thank you very much. Thank you, Officer Bowden. And uh, now, Madam Chair? Super, oh, Supervisor Elias. Yeah, I, I was going to ask for a moment of personal privilege. Please, if proceed. If we're finished with, with Muriel, what was her name? Muriel? Kush, Kush, Kush. Oh, no. it's kind of like, oh, never mind. Okay, that's Thank great, you. yeah. She's got a number of different names. Interesting. Okay, I just wanted to uh, take a moment of personal privilege and thank you, Chair Bronson, um, to mention my wife, Emily Veldi Elias, and uh, the fact that uh, today is our 25th anniversary. And so I just want to say I love you, Emily, and thanks for always being there with me. Uh, in spite of all my craziness. Thank you very much uh, to the Thank rest of the board. And my condolences to your wife. No. No, congratulations. Um, let's see. We have a presentation proclamation, item five. What's pleasure of the board? Supervisor Carroll. Motion and a second. Any objections? Hearing none, motion carries. And Supervisor Carroll, I think you have some people in the audience sure who do. would. Come on, yeah, yeah, come on behind them. We're happy that you're here. 
Joyce and Judy. This framed proclamation we hope you'll hang at the White Elephant. White Elephant 50th anniversary is a milestone that I'm sure is, means a lot to so many of the charities and other organizations that you donate toward each and every year. I know the benefactor has gone from just a, a small amount of money way into the millions now. So if I could read this proclamation, I'd do it proudly as not only a supporter but a customer of the Green Valley White Elephant. I think I got uh, something I'm wearing there. Whereas the Green Valley County Fair, White Elephant was organized in 1964 by a small group of local community leaders to promote good fellowship and provide an easy way of Green Valley residents to get better acquainted and to give back to the community. And sales that year made by 16 volunteers were $146.20. But remember, that was a lot of money 50 years ago. Whereas 50 years later, the White Elephant has donated over $26 million to over 700 worthy organizations. And whereas in the past year, nearly 600 volunteers have donated approximately 120,000 volunteer hours val valued at $22.14 per hour, which equates to over $2.6 million of economic impact. And whereas through the Hollis G. Roberts Educational Foundation, the White Elephant has given over 1.6 million in scholarships to an estimated 120 area high school students. And whereas items at White Elephant cannot resell are donated to other organizations such as the Salvation Army, Lions Club, Kiwanis, Casa Community Services, Prison Ministries, Border Patrol dog training as well as area schools, churches and shelters which greatly enhance the scope of its contributions to the community. And whereas a year-long celebration is planned to commemorate the White Elephant's 50th anniversary year, now therefore be it resolved that the Pima County Board of Supervisors hereby proclaims Friday, January 31st, to be the 50th anniversary of the Green Valley Country, White, Country Fair White Elephant, passed and adopted this 21st day of January 2014. Thanks, Joyce, for being here, and I'm happy to let you and Judy say some meaningful words to us. Thank you. Well, I want to thank the Board of Supervisors for this recognition. You know, the White Elephant has been a fixture in Green Valley for 50 years, and we appreciate the support of the community. And we provide funds and funding for agencies and organizations from the Tucson area all the way down to the border. So I'd love to see all of you at the White Elephant. We're open Monday through Saturday, 9 to 12. And come on down and see us, please. And our kickoff event is Friday, January 31st. So we will be having a celebration beginning at 1.30 in the afternoon. And approximately 2 o'clock, we will open this door for special shopping hours from 2 to 5. And that hardly ever happens. We do it once a year for our Midnight Madness, um, which is the a couple of days before our, our annual parade. Um, so it's kind of a special event for us to, to do that. So again, thank you all for having us and for the proclamation. We really appreciate it. Well, thank you. And thank Green. Thank you. Thank the White Elephant for all you do for Amato and Aravaca, Aravaca Junction, um, and encourage everybody to go shopping. They really have some one of a kind interesting, interesting thing. So it's well worth the trip. And Madam again, you, you may want to mention your hours after supervisors so everybody who, you know, we don't want people making the big trip knowing that you close at noon after Richard. I would just say that uh, numerous times when I compliment Supervisor Carroll on his, his rather refined way of dressing, that, that uh, they usually, he usually will say, well, I got it at the White Elephant in, in Green Valley. And but so you do a great job in helping him dress. Well, so we to do. Speak. We just don't. We don't lay the outfits out though to the mix and match. You know, right, that, right. That's oh, totally up to yeah, him. He's very, <laughs> he's very cultured. Well, I, I agree with that. Thank you. Oh, again, we're open from nine to noon Monday through Saturday. Okay. And then Thanks. your special event is the thirty-first. Our, our special event is January thirty-first. So it'll be a week from this Friday, uh, beginning at one thirty at the store entrance, which is on the the west side of our building, and we're in the government complex at 601 North La Cunata in Green Valley.
I've met volunteers who I think have been there for decades. I don't know if you have one who was there since the very start, but it's, uh, it's obvious to me that um, after all these years of knowing the quality of the people that volunteer, how much camaraderie is shown there. And I'm sure your event's going to be a lot of fun, so I encourage you all to come on January 31st. Thank you so much. It was nice seeing you, Joyce. Haven't seen you in a while. Ever since you retired. Thank you. All right, before we move on, uh, there have been some amendments to the January 21st, 2014 agenda and addendum. On the regular agenda, on page three, item 15. CO7-13-03, uh, Lung Inc. North Thornydale Plan Amendment. Uh, page 4, Item 16, CO7-13-04, Pacific International Properties, LLP, Thornydale Road Plan Amendment. Page 4, Item 17, CO7-13-05, Mandarin Associates North Thornydale Road Plan Amendment, and page 4, item 18, CO7-13-06, Hardy Thornydale One Associates et al., West Hardy Road Plan Amendment. The applicant has requested that the, uh, these items be continued to the Board of Supervisors meeting of February 18, 2014. I know we had a number, number of speakers. Um, that had wanted to talk on this item. It has, at the request of the applicant, um, uh, I think will be continued until February 18th, and we haven't opened the hearing yet. Um, we just got this notification this morning. Is that, oh, okay. No, okay. No, I guess this, we would actually, sometime last week, yeah. And then the second item is on the addendum, page two, item eight. Boards, commissions, and our committees. The Pima County Fair Commission appointment. District 1 has requested that this item be removed from the agenda. There are no objections from, board, uh, from the board. Uh, these items will um, uh, be removed from the agenda today. All right. We have um, several executive session items. I'd entertain a motion to move into exec. Motion and a second to move it into exec. Are there objections? Hearing none, we'll return at the sound of the gavel. Okay, there we go. Um, we had several executive session items. Uh, Council. Yes, Madam Chair, members of the board. Item two on the addendum agenda involves Pima County versus DFA LLC et al. versus Pima County. This is Pima County Superior Court Clause number C 2011 2935. In this case, the county filed an action to condemn an easement for multi uh, use paths along a portion of a 1.38 acre parcel owned by DFA LLC in the vicinity of I-10 Frontage Road and Diamond Street. <coughs> the County Attorney's Office seeks authority from the board to proceed uh, with negotiations in this matter as discussed in executive session. What's the pleasure of the board? Madam Chair. Supervisor Elias. I move that we uh, continue uh, in our discussions with the County Attorney and uh, move forward as advised in executive session. Second. Motion and a second to proceed as uh, directed in executive session. Are there any objections? Hearing none, motion carries. Counselor? Yes. <coughs> the next item is item three on the addendum. This involves the board of supervisors sitting as the district board of directors for the flood control district. It involves Pima County Flood Control District versus uh, Fidelity National Title Agency, Inc. at all Pima County Superior Court case number C, 2013-2297. 
In this case, the Board of Directors previously approved a settlement involving the acquisition of approximately 155.35 acres of real property controlled by the uh, BSE Trust for a total compensation of $1 million. The BSE Trust in the case then informed the county attorney's office that it no longer believed it was the beneficiary of the trust holding fee title to two parcels, two of the parcels involved. Uh, these are parcels 137-11431D and 137-11431G. Uh, both parcels total 0.78 acres. The BSE Trust instead provided a quick claim deed to those parcels conveying any interest it has in them to the Pima County Flood Control District. The county administrator and the county attorney's office recommend approval of the modification of the settlement accepting a quick claim deed for the two parcels in lieu of condemning them. The other terms of the settlement would remain the same. Madam Chair. Supervisor Elias. Move the county attorney's recommendation. Second. Motion and a second to approve the county attorney's recommendation. Are there any objections? Hearing none, motion carries. Moving on then to the regular agenda, item six, consent calendar. Um, call to the public. Is there anyone in the audience that wishes to address us on any of the items on the consent calendar? If not, what's the pleasure of the board? Madam Chair. Supervisor Miller. I'd like to pull. Um, second. I apologize. From the consent calendar, I'd like to pull out calendar items one, two, and three for separate discussion and vote. I'd move to. You're pull moving items. to. to um, I move to pull items one, two, and three for separate discussion and vote. Is there a second? I'll second. Motion and a second. Objections? We'll pull those items. Supervisor Miller. Um, Chair, if I, I just ask for one clarification. Excuse me, Supervisor Miller, did you want to vote on each one of these separate or the three as a group? Um, I'd like to vote on uh, item one and two separately, and then item three, I'd just like a clarification. Very good. Thank you. Okay. On item one and two, uh, we have a combined uh, $106,000 for youth ser services programs, and on item one, we have 31000 coming from the general fund. And on item two, $76,000 from the general fund. Um, I, and this is the reason that I did not support the fiscal 13-14 budget. These are prime examples of why I voted against that budget, is because we're increasing property taxes and placing the burden on the backs of taxpayers and in, for, in order to fund these types of programs. Um, I'd like to see us reduce our spending as we slowly emerge from one of the most difficult economic crises in history. And I hope that we do not begin uh, fiscal year 14-15 with this same type of budget process. So my objection on item one is the 31,000 coming from the general fund. So I move to deny the approval of item one on the consent agenda. Is there a second? Motion dies for lack of a second. Madam Chair. Supervisor Elias. I'll move items one and two on consent. Um, I wasn't finished with item two. Excuse me? I wasn't finished with making my motion on item two. No, I, I thought the chair said that. Excuse me, I apologize, Supervisor Miller. I thought the chair said the motion died for lack of a second. Unless I misheard. Did I mishear? I think the motion was only related to item one. Oh. Okay. Right. And on item two, I move for the same reason that we're pulling $676,000 from the general fund to fund this item. And again, with the same comments. I, excuse me. We have to deal with item one before we move on to item oh, okay. two. Okay. What, I thought what it died. It, for yeah, just respect. a point of order. Uh, what's the pleasure of the board on item one? Madam Chair. Supervisor Elias. I'll go ahead and move item one. Motion and a second to approve item one. Objections? No. Supervisor Miller votes no. Any further objections? If not, motion carries four to one. Item two, Supervisor Miller. Um, same objections on item two. I move to deny item two because $76,000 is coming from the general fund. And until we <coughs> reduce our spending and emerge from one of the economic crises, I do not believe we should be funding this item. So I move to deny this item. Is there a second? Motion dies for lack of a second. What's the pleasure of the board? Madam uh, Chair. Supervisor Elias. I'll move item two on consent. Second. Motion and a second to approve item two. Are there 
Objections? Item two? Yes, on item two. Yeah. Um, Supervisor Miller um, objects. Are there any other objections? If not, motion carries four to one with Supervisor Miller objecting. Voting nay. Uh, moving on to item three, Supervisor Miller. Um, Madam Chair, on item three, um, I, it's a technicality, <coughs> but um, it's still, um, I, I think it needs to be corrected for the record. The contract amendment changes the, changes the uh, project management from Pima County Justice Court to Sun City Court Complex. Um, we now call that the Downtown Court Complex. It's just a technicality to get that corrected for the record. Is there any objections to that correction? No, there, no and objections. I, and I, I would move to approve the item with that correction. With that correction. Is there a second? Second. Motion and a second to approve item three as amended. Are there any objections? Hearing none, motion carries. Uh, what's the pleasure of the board with the remaining items of the consent calendar? Madam Chair. Supervisor I'll Elias. move the remainder of consent. Second. Motion and a second to approve remainder of the consent. Are there any objections? Hearing none, motion carries. Moving on to uh, item eight, county administrator classification compensation. What's pleasure of the board? Madam Chair, I'll move item eight. Is there a second? second. Motion and a second to approve item eight. Objections? Hearing none, motion carries. Moving on to Office of Emergency Management, items 9 and 10, and resolutions 2014-4 and 2014-5. Uh, what's the pleasure of the board? Madam, Madam Chair. So, um, Supervisor Carroll, I think you both came in at Please. the same time. Oh, Madam Chair, on item 9, I'd like to move resolution number 2014-4, emergency operations plan. And on 10, together, move resolution 2014-5 on the community wildfire protection plan. Is there a second? Second. Motion and a second to approve items 9 and 10 in resolutions 2014-4 and 2014-5. Are there any objections? Hearing none, motion carries. Moving on to item 11, community services, employment and training. Pima County One Stop and Resolution 2014-6. What's pleasure of the board? Madam Chair, I'll move that item. Second. Motion and a second to approve item 11 and Resolution 2014-6. Object objections? Hearing none, motion carries. We're moving on to hearings. Franchises, license permits, items 12, 13, and 14. These are hearings. Is there anyone in the audience who wishes to address us on any of these items at this time? If not, what's pleasure of the board? Madam Chair. Supervisor Carroll. I'd like to close the public hearing and move <coughs> items 12, 13, and 14, extension of premises patio permit at 10500, 10500 East Old Vale Road, extension of premises at 2805 East Skyline Drive, and a liquor license for Flying Leap Vineyards at 4330 North Campbell Avenue. Second. Motion and second to approve items 12, 13, and 14 under franchise license and permit. Are there any objections? Hearing Close none. Public Close public hearing. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, if there are no objections, motion carries. Um, items 15, 16, 17, and 18 have been continued to our mm -hmm. February 18th meeting. Um, so we are now moving on to item 19, traffic resolution, and 2014-7. Item 20, traffic resolution, 2014-8. These are hearings. Is there anyone in the audience wishing to address us on these items at this time? Madam Chair. Supervisor Carroll. Seeing there's no one in the audience who wishes to address us on these items, I'd like to go ahead and close the public hearing and move traffic resolution in the X9 Ranch area. Resolution number 2014-7. Second. And oh, I'm sorry. item 20, traffic resolution 2014-8 in the great town of Ajo, Arizona. Thank you. Second. Motion and a second. Uh, any objections? Hearing none. And close the hearing, right? Uh, um, hearing none, motion carries. Moving on to the addendum agenda, uh, addendum one, 
Uh, item four, Board of Supervisors, Legislative District two, appointment to fill the vacancy in the Arizona State Senate from Legislative District two. We received a letter January 8 from uh, William G. Rowe, Chair of the Arizona Democratic Party, uh, fulfilling the statutory requirements. Um, they, the um, precinct committee persons met on Saturday, 2000, January 18, 2014, to nominate three persons to fill the vacant seat, three eligible persons. Um, a quorum was present, and the people nominated are the following individuals. Demian Klinko, 230 East 23rd Street, Tucson, Arizona, 85713. Andrea D'Alessandro, 2214 East Falcon Vista Drive, Green Valley, Arizona, 85714. And Annabelle Nunez, 2446 South St. Thomas Aquinas Drive, Tucson, Arizona, 85713. Um, what is the pleasure of the board on this item? Madam Chair. Supervisor. Madam Chair, first I'd oh, like I to uh, congratulate uh, all three nominees. Uh, uh, I was at the, uh, the meeting on Saturday morning. And uh, actually, I'd like to congratulate anybody, uh, all, all of the uh, candidates for it, but certainly the, the, the three. I've had the pleasure of uh, sitting and talking with each of the three. And regardless of, of whether or not they uh, get the appointment, uh, I would strongly encourage their continuing participation in the, in the uh, public process. Uh, either as a, a community advocate or a future candidate. So um, having been there and having met with uh, all these candidates, uh, I, I think uh, that, that, uh, that one, of the, one of the issues uh, for me, having served in both chambers, is that uh, I, I want to see somebody who has some level of experience going into this particular uh, position, uh, as well as someone who has or does represent uh, the, uh, the district in the past. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and nominate, uh, I move to, uh, to nominate uh, Andrea DeLosandro to be the next state senator from District 2. Second. There's a motion and a second uh, for uh, Andrea DeLosandro. Roll call, please. Madam Chair, I, so I'd just I'll like to make a comment, comment before, before we go to roll call. Uh, thank you, Supervisor Valadez. I'd also like to thank uh, the Democratic Party and um, the uh, precinct committee people from LD2, which had an outstanding turnout, uh, 42 out of the 44 eligible precinct committee people um, showed up and voted. And uh, that speaks very well for LD2, and that speaks very well for our friends at the Democratic Party who worked to make sure that those folks got out there and um, exercised their right to um, replace uh, Senator Lopez, who will be leaving us. Thank you very much. Madam Chair. Supervisor Carroll. Madam Chair, I just want to say as well, um, this is a Democratic seat. I can appreciate that. I was not at the organizing meeting last Saturday, but I did receive the, uh, feedback from several members that had been. I want to congratulate all three applicants. I also want to say, and this word, the Republican choice, I would probably have such a tough time deciding I'd put the three in a hat let it pick as we do sometimes ties at precinct committeeman choices. But I do want to say that uh, Damien Klinko has sent out a great mobilization of so many friends. You should be proud of the numbers of letters that you received, although you did not receive a nomination right now or a motion. I do want to say that I heard from very many of your friends and colleagues, Damien, which is something you should be proud of. I've not talked to, nor have I met uh, the third applicant, but I think that Andrea D'Alessandro has proven one thing, that she listens to people. She's uber present and always available for, for uh, dialogue, whether you're a Republican or a Democrat. And I just wanted to say a congratulations to those people who applied to get involved in the process, and I as well as Mr. Valadez. I uh, look forward to your continued engagement, Ms. Nunez, Ms. D'Alessandro, and Mr. Klinko. Thank you very much for allowing me to say something. All right. Any other comments? I'm just going to add um, a quick, short comment, and that is I'm so glad to see that we, um, we have such qualified candidates, but I'm particularly heartened that we have young qualified candidates, and I would encourage Damian 
um, to pursue elected office in some shape or form, uh, but your efforts, uh, your grassroots efforts were pretty phenomenal. And with that, we'll call the question if there are no further comments. Roll call. Supervisor Carroll? Aye. Supervisor Elias? Aye. Supervisor Miller? Aye. Supervisor Valadez? Aye. Chair Bronson? Aye. Motion carries 5-0. Uh, Congratulations. And um, I'll say she, she's, I do not see her. Is she, is she here? Am I she's just not? Yeah, she's probably in Phoenix at the legislature. Um, and I'm assuming that th the proper swearing in will be handled up there. Is that correct, Clerk? Okay. Madam Chair. Supervisor Carroll. Madam Chair, you may want to preview the next step and since you're finding uh, a new vacancy in the House, uh, please notify uh, the, the Democratic Party and the other members that there's an important now next Actually, procedure Actually, I think, I think um, I, yeah, they're in the room, but I think that, that um, the resignation and the swearing in, I think uh, uh, the new s the Senator to be, uh, D'Alessandro, will notify the party. Is that, I think that's a proper procedure. Mm. Madam Chair, uh, if I may, what hap will happen is the Lasanta will be sworn in. The House Speaker has to declare the seat vacant, which will then be notif uh, notify the Secretary yeah. of State, who will then notify the State Party Chair, who will then get the, the local party to um, schedule a meeting. Thank you for the clarification, and congratulations. All right. Uh, moving on then to item five, County Administrator 2013 Founders Award. What's the uh, pleasure of the board? Madam Chair. Supervisor Elias. I'll move the remainder of the addendum, but um, yeah, I'll move the Oh remainder wait, there, as there. amended. As amended, that's correct. Madam Chair, I'd like to um, keep item well, five. Okay, uh, um, was there a second to your motion at that point? Okay, Supervisor Miller. I would just like to uh, vote separately on item five because I have an objection to that item. Oh, okay. I would drop my motion, no problem. Okay. It's a pleasure of the board on item five. Uh, I'll go ahead and move item five, if that's, you know. Second. Motion and a second to move item five. Supervisor Miller, you had an objection? Yes, I have an objection because of this amount of money coming out of the uh, Board of Supervisors Contingency Fund again. We are in uh, dire straits financially, and I think this is money that we could um, ill afford to spend, so I'm going to object to this item. All right. Um, I will call the question then. Um, are there any objections? I object to this item. Supervisor Miller votes nay. Any further objections? If not, then motion carries four to one. Item six, uh, clerk, well, item six, seven, um, 9, 10, and 11. What's the pleasure of the board on these items? Move the items. Second. Motion and a second to move items 6, 7, 9, 10, and 11. Any objections? Hearing none, motion carries. Um, that brings us to the end of the addendum agenda. Uh, we have now call to the audience. We have three speakers, um, Mary Murphy. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, board. Nice to see you again. I don't know how I can top last adventure, except that this Mary Murphy's had lots of excellent adventures in these parts. Uh, First, it was my Aunt Margarita once again was here for the original white elephant forming and parade and contribution. And I've watched it grow over 50 years and I want to thank them as well. I've shopped there and my last Midnight Madness, I was having a heck of a good time helping the women style themselves. We put together some million dollar outfits down there. It was really fun. Uh, and I'm going to the next one. That was in 64, and I spoke about my horseback ride in 74. Now we only have 20 years worth of family history to cover before I get to flying the plane all around out there, over the mines, over the tailings, dipping a wing to my parents and their home out back of my house, uh, the troubled house now. Uh, 
Mom said, I bet she's flying that plane. Dad damn near cried. When I got home, it was like I just got in from curfew violation. Were you flying that plane, she said. I said, yeah. She said, I knew you would. I said, but did you know I could? I'd have paid more attention to the drainage ways and other issues while I was up there. I've invited Mr. Huckleberry to bring the helicopter and let's take a look around things down there. Uh, so far, uh, he hasn't obliged taking me out there to see especially what's going on with what they call the West Loop down there, uh, all the setup to the taking out of the Continental Bridge. Uh, we had a West Loop in Chicago. I didn't even know there was one out here until recently. I've also asked Mr. Carroll's office for a heads up on when we can expect the CMG engineering drainage report. Uh, I want to see it. Uh, and taken, going back to Mr. Huckleberry's graduation in 1967, I graduated too that year, 1967, from grammar school. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> St. Christina, <laughs> southwest side of Chicago, 111th and Kedzie, and just a um, mile away, little Ray Carroll was beginning his career, <laughs> grammar school career at St. Walter. That's correct. That's correct. Yeah, 1967. And little, did, did everybody know we were from the same neighborhood back there? And I, I'm older, so I'll be the bossy one. Uh, there's one hill within the city limits of Chicago. It is at 111th and Longwood Drive and all up and along down there. And if you were back and forth to Morgan Park High School, uh, the summer of 78, 79, that hill would have put you on your butt a few times. And if it didn't, you weren't having any fun. But we've got hills and things to deal with and Canoa Ranch but the, the most disturbing part of things is that there is cover-up about what's going on with some of those homes, uh, drainage issues, houses built where they shouldn't be, and I've heard gag orders. Deeply disturbing that anyone involved should be shut up. But I know how they like to shut people up when they start talking. Gag orders, Canoe Ranch. Thank you. Thank you. Brian Johnson. Good morning, Chairperson, Bronson Board, and members of the public. My name is Brian Johnson. I live at 7025 North Boswell Lane out in beautiful Picture Rocks. And I work um, for Pima County. I'm a county employee, and I'm also a member of SEIU, our county union, employees union. As we look forward to, the, to this year coming forward as the economy approves, um, our union stands ready to work with the county management to go above and beyond the call to provide quality public services to our community, whether it be making sure that Pima County residents have access to health insurance, making sure our roads are safe, and expanding access to resources in our public libraries. We believe 2014 will be a year of opportunity and as the board begins to work on its budget for the 2014-2015 fiscal year, we ask that you continue to consider the effects this recession has had on your employees and our families. For years, we did more with less work to keep our services um, at a quality level and available to all Pima County residents. And as the economy turns around, we need to stay competitive, keeping the best and the brightest here in Pima County. Over the last six years, we have lost a lot of ground economically. Employees, like many in our community, are struggling to pay our bills, deal with the cost of health insurance, and keeping up with the costs of living. We know we will not climb out of this hole in one year, but we ask this board to continue to make steps towards making employees an important priority, and thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Johnson. Mr. Williams, Gilbert Williams. Need your name for the record, and you have three minutes. And I, we're gonna get you a... Hand mic. Yeah, we got a hand mic if you okay. want it, too. Yeah. Yeah. 
No, you probably get the hand mic. Uh, Madam Chairman, board members, my name is Gilbert Williams. I am a resident of Maya Estates. Uh, but just as a procedural question, because of the fact that at least 14 of us came here this morning, expecting that we might be able to provide comments again related to the uh, proposed amendments to the comprehensive plan, uh, or at least by, by Mr. Portner and his organization, or at least give comments related to his request for a continuance of the discussion related to those properties. We filled out speaker cards, and we looked at the closely now at the at the wording that's on the speaker cards and it suggests that we could provide comments to any of the amendment items um, then I looked at the previous agendas related to the fact that mr. Portner and his organization was requesting amendments to the comprehensive plan and this is a this agenda item was a request for a continuance so what, what we need to know is if it says that, that may not be the case in terms of us being able to provide comments related to the request for a continuance. Is that true? This is called to the audience, so we are we can't respond. Um, no, this is a, um, this is a I, no, I know, but this, this is called to the question. audience. Um, um, let me go to Councilor. Councilor, what what are our options? Yeah. Um, <coughs> I mean, you, your your options are very limited. It called to the audience. It'd probably be best if what you would do is just direct him to talk to me after uh, so, uh, after the matter. And so I can I, touch base I, with if him. I understand correctly, then I'm actually not allowed to ask that question. This is I'm just supposed to give comments about some things. Okay, then I'm going to change it. I have a minute thirty five seconds. I'd like to change <laughs> this to a comment sure. related to the fact that we need to have information ahead of time before fourteen of us get in our vehicles, provide, you know ourselves transportation parking and the, the time that it takes to get here the time that it takes to prepare our presentations some of the people in the audience took off work today some people hired people to, to work in their their positions as professionals and uh, so we came to sit and watch and unfortunately just uh, rather than really provide input related to a request that somebody made to watch you guys just decide to make the continuance. So had we not shown up and you decided not to continue it, then we would have had, then we would have missed the opportunity to actually provide input on the issue at hand. So that seems to be a catch-22, or we just have to decide to come to every meeting. So there's, if there's really not a way to provide input on a request for continuance, my suggestion would that to be added to the procedures that are available to the public with the Board of Supervisors. Thank you. Thank you. Our final speaker, Jerry Adebani. <clears throat> Madam Chairman and Board of Supervisors, my name's It's my name is Table now. <laughs> I'm from California. I was expecting an earthquake. <laughs> my name is Jerry Ottoboni, and I live in Oral Valley. <laughs> anyway, uh, Supervisor Richard Elias and Supervisor Raymond Valde Ramon Valdez and Supervisor Ray Carroll all continually state that they are helping the middle class, the lower middle class, and the poverty level in Pima County. I even saw Supervisor Elias in his really nice looking beige beret at McDonald's helping a group, of, a group picketing for higher wages. Yet when an individual tries to bring good paying jobs to Catalina, which will bring tax revenue to Pima County, they vote against it. They would rather tax people on a fixed income, which I happen to be, on their property tax and of course individuals who are renting will also have their rent increase because of property taxes and then rather than uh, having taxable income come to Pima County. In fact, I just heard on the radio this morning that Mr. Huckleberry wants to tax the homeowners again. I want to commend Chairman Sharon Bronson for being so smart and to have the foresight to comprehend 
what a positive benefit this would be by voting yes along with Supervisor Allie Miller to bring jobs and income to Pima County. Thank you. Is there anyone else who wishes to address as a call to the audience at this point? If not, then without objection, this meeting stands adjourned. Was that loud enough for you? No. Yeah.